Hey everybody, my name is Ashley Rush and I'm an independent creative memories advisor located in North Carolina. Today I am here to celebrate spring. I know it's not really quite officially spring yet, but my sinuses are telling me otherwise, so I'm going to go ahead and jump right in. I'll be doing that by using our brand new Endless Meadows collection and by using it in a project recipe. If you guys aren't familiar with project recipes, this is something that Creative Memories creates for each and every single one of their collections. But the best thing about, um, about these project recipes is that you can use them over and over and over again. And you can refresh them by changing out the collections or using a different tool. We'll be doing both of those things with this project recipe. We'll actually be using the Spring Medley project recipe. It came out in 2020. And my favorite things about this are one, it gives you lots of different spots to add photos. So if you guys are like me, you are creating um, and taking pictures and you need pages that have lots of photo spots. And my second favorite thing is that there's like almost no waste. So I'll show you. Um, it uses four sheets of paper, but when you're done, this is all that's left over. You got two long strips and two skinny strips. I mean, I, you can't really ask for much better than that, can you? To complete this recipe, you will need four sheets of paper. I'm using Endless Meadows. I've got two sheets of paper from the Tone on Tone pack and two sheets of paper from the um, designer pack. You'll also need your tape runner. I have um, my traditional and my repositionable. That's really going to come to what makes you more comfortable. You're going to need your border maker system and a chain style border maker cartridge. I'm using the brand new circle chain. <clears throat> and then of course you're going to need your 12 inch trimmer. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to set some of this aside for this recipe you will be using your papers as a base. So you'll use your two tone on tone papers as your base here. <clears throat> and then you are going to cut apart your two designer sheets. Now, the cool thing about this recipe is that you are gonna use just about every single square inch of this paper, which means there's no waste, which I really love. So I'm going to start with this sheet. You need your border maker system, the cartridge that we've talked about. And the first thing you're going to do is cut four chains out of this paper. If you aren't familiar with our border maker system, it is a series of interchangeable cartridges that you can use to make 12 inch borders. I have um, a couple of videos that explain the different types of cartridges as well as how to use the system. Once you have your four chains, you are done with the border maker system and you can set it aside. Now we're gonna pull out our trimmer. <clears throat> In my previous videos, I would um, cut and then put the pieces round about where they go on the page. This time I'm gonna make all of my cuts first and then I'm going to assemble. So you're gonna take what's left over from your border maker punches <clears throat> you're going to hold your paper so that the 12 inch side is going up and down and you're going to make a three and three quarter inch cut. You're going to take that strip that is three and three quarters. You're going to give it a turn and make a five and three quarters cut twice. 
coming to five and three quarters. And then I'm gonna do that one more time. Now I have a tiny little strip. This is extra, you can set that aside. You're gonna take your second sheet of 12 inch paper that you have remaining. You're gonna cut this at three and three quarters. The skinny little strip you have here is extra. You're gonna take that 12 inch strip, you're gonna give it a quarter turn, and again, cut at five and three quarters twice. <clears throat> all right, again, you've got this tiny little strip and that is <clears throat> all that you have left over from our first sheet. Now we're going to take our other sheet here and we are going to cut it. Um, I want to make sure that any um, linear pattern I have is going, um, is perpendicular to my trimmer. So um, as you can see, this is a grass um, <clears throat> pattern. And I want to make sure that I'm preserving that pattern this way. So that's why I'm cutting it here. You're going to make a two inch cut. And you're going to make another two inch cut. Now you're going to make a half inch cut. You can either, you can use either side of your trimmer. It's just habit for me. I like to use this smaller side. It gives my paper a bigger base for such a small cut. You're actually going to do that twice. You're going to take your remaining sheet and you're going to make a six and a half inch cut. This strip is extra. You can set that aside, but you've got your big six and a half inch, 12 inch sheet. You're going to give that a quarter turn and you're going to make a four and a half inch cut twice. This leaves you with a small rectangle. You're gonna give that a quarter turn again, and you're gonna make a three and a quarter inch cut. We've now made all of the cuts necessary. You can set your trimmer aside. As I discussed earlier with you, there are barely any leftovers. So this is what you have left over at the end. <clears throat> and that is it. You can of course use this to make like a fun little border. You can look at one of my using your scraps videos and you'll find something to do with these. All right, it's time to start assembling. <clears throat> You'll be using um, the two inch long strips to make a border. And I'm just loosely assembling right now. And then those half inch strips that are made from the same paper, you're gonna turn those over and make a, you know, a little bit of uh, uh, interest. You're gonna give it a little bit of 
pop of color. Then you will put your six and a half by four and a half mats up here. The small little rectangles are going to go here. Their skinnier rectangles are going roughly there. Again, I'm just sort of getting an idea of where things are going before I come in and make changes. Now your chains are actually going to get, oh, excuse me, they're falling out of the way. <clears throat> These are actually going to get tucked in behind your border to give it sort of like a scalloped edge. So they're gonna go in like this. So I'll show you an easy way to put those together. But now is a good time to sort of fiddle around with what you have. Um, check the different layouts you have, figure out what looks good. So I think I'm going to, let's see, bring in more of that purple if we use this side. Okay. And I think I will use the floral side here. And then we can use the striped side there. All right, what do you guys think? I think we've got a good base going. Now, of course, if you don't like using, you know, two different sides, you can choose to do two of the same. It's really up to you and what you're comfortable with. It's your scrapbook page, right? All right, <clears throat> so let's start by putting together those borders. I'm just gonna slide my pages up and I'm gonna take my two inch borders and I'm gonna turn them upside down, all right? And then when they're upside down, I'm gonna take my repositionable, whoops, my repositional tape runner. I'm gonna run it the edge of my two inch sheet. Now I'm going to take my border um, and you want to, whatever side is going to be forward facing, you want that facing down. So I know that I want that very slight purple pattern to be facing up. So um, I'm gonna put it down towards the table and have my floral facing the camera here. Now you're just going to add your um, <clears throat> border straight to that adhesive, trying to get it as even as you can across. And you can just rub your finger across it when you're done. Um, normally you could then come back and rub off this adhesive, but since I'm gonna be putting this down on the paper, I'm gonna go ahead and keep it uh, all on my border so that I can stick it to my page here in a minute. I'm just gonna repeat. Again, I'm trying to get about half of my border sticking out of the paper so that I give it like a scalloped looking edge. All right, so this is what your border will look like. Isn't that fun? All right, <clears throat> I'm going to keep this here so I can use it as a guide for doing my second border. <clears throat> and I'm just going to move my photo mats up so I can make room for them on the page. I'm going to add some extra adhesive. You could even come in with your regular adhesive if you, you know, you think you'll need a stronger bond. I'm 
and your, um, let's see, like that, your border is going to go, I don't know, like maybe a half inch, quarter inch off the bottom of your page. And then you just need to come back in with your thin half inch strips. And those are going to go about, you know, a third of the way up or two thirds of the way down, just giving a little pop of color to your border. All right, now it's time to add in our um, photo mats. So it's best to start with um, this mat here that um, <clears throat> is going to go roughly just over top of that color pop inside of your border. So this is when your repositionable really comes in handy. You can use that and put your mats down. And then if you don't like the placement, you can always come back and fix it. Then you're going to take your rectangular piece, your small one. That is going to be lined up with your tall rectangle. Then your large mat will be even with your smallest rectangle. So as you can see, the, the inside border here is thicker than this one. And then your last mat is your um, other skinny purple. And that gets lined up with this mat. So now you'll just repeat that pattern. You're gonna mirror it on your other page. And just like that, your project recipe is done. Now you've got spots for several photos here. Um, these large four and a half by six and a half mats will hold a four by six photo. We've got um, these longer, um, skinnier mats. They will hold a three and a quarter by five and a quarter photo. And then of course you have your small rectangles, which will hold a two and a half by two and three quarters photo. If you don't have that many photos, you can always sub out and put in a journaling box in one of these spots or perhaps a variety map pack. Like, let's see, I just had those. Well, they disappeared on me, of course. There they are. <clears throat> so you could always come in with a variety of map pack of some sort for um, a title, let's see. For title or journaling purposes. Now, if you do end up using all of these spaces for your photos, you've got two spots here that would be great for journaling or your title. And then you can create your triangle with your embellishments by putting like a cluster here and here and then you know somewhere maybe let's see up high or down low um yeah so like here maybe here and then up here now before i filmed this video i did another sample using different papers
Now this one has a bit more contrast with the base pages being green and yellow versus different shades of the blue. Definitely something that I normally don't do with my papers, but I don't know, something I, I really like it. It's bringing in all of the colors here. And then of course these papers can all be turned if you would prefer. You know, you can have the borders go up and down instead of um, left to right. So that's a really fun um, layout here as well. Do you guys have a preference? Do you like the green and yellow or do you like the blue, green and purples? Now, of course, if you are not into the mismatched bases, you could do this project recipe straight on your page or use um, matching designer paper or even cardstock as your base. If you're choosing to use cardstock, you would need obviously two sh less sheets of paper. Um, same that if you're going right on your base. So what did you guys think of that project recipe? Wasn't it super simple? Did you have a favorite? Were you like team purple and green or were you team green and yellow? Um, honestly, I like them both and I'm not sure that I can pick and that's strange for me. I normally have like a favorite that is so stinking obvious, but this time I'm, I'm kind of torn. I, I like both. Um, if you guys are interested in seeing more of these project recipes, make sure you comment below. I have been very good about doing them at least once a month, but I could be tempted to do two if you guys really like it. I want to thank you all for tuning in. And um, if you are looking for more ways to connect, I would encourage you to find me on Facebook or Instagram. I post daily content there. And if you're looking for more inspiration, I do in-person and virtual events. So there's something out there for everybody. I recently announced a free National Scrapbook Day event that I'm offering for anyone who purchases the National Scrapbook Day bundle for me. I can link you guys to that video announcement and maybe I'll throw a card up here if, um, if that's something that'll interest you. And if you love anything you see in this video, I would very much encourage you to shop on my website, um, which you guys can also find in the description. I have all of the products there and also so much more because we release new products every other week. And then if you just love everything, I would encourage you to think about joining my team. I am always looking to grow and I would love for you to grow with me. Till next time, I'll see you next week. Bye.